Tertiary students from different higher learning institutions across the country are at loggerheads with the National Student Financial Aid Scheme over the introduction of a new allowance payment system. Now, academic activities have been disrupted in many institutions as students continue to protest against the director payment system, citing issues of signing up, access to funds and exorbitant bank charges, as well as the inconsistencies in the payment dates. Hi to Dumelang, good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we're joined by the SRC president of the TUT, that's Kiyama Hetwe Masike, who is joining us in studio as we try to understand uh, the current issues that are happening between NSFAS and, uh, you know, the students, particularly on the issue of the direct uh, payment system. And I must say that uh, we did invite the National Student Financial Aid Scheme uh, to this discussion, um, we were supposed to be joined in by Slumezi Koza, who is the spokesperson, but um, they could not make it for the interview. Uh, Kamohetu is joining us in studio this evening. Kamohetu, thanks very much for taking the time. Yeah, good evening, my brother, and good evening to your listeners. Much appreciated. You know, I, I, I know there's quite a, a, an array of issues, yeah. particularly when it comes to students. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the issue at the top of the mind is the issue of uh, funding, yes. which is a major crisis. Let's talk about the challenges that are happening on the ground. You are from yeah. the Tswane University of uh, Technology. I know that um, obviously students would voice out their concerns via demonstrations. What are the challenges from the student population? Yeah, look, my brother, I think our narrative is very simple. Uh, it's to say that the struggle for free and quality education continues. Uh, and this is precisely informed by the fact that uh, our university is home to students that come from the poor of the poorest uh, backgrounds. Uh, and of course, these are students that depend uh, on this money uh, to survive on a daily basis in our universities. And of course, this money also gives them access uh, to, to stay in our, in our residences, whether it be tra traditional residences of the university or private residences. And of course, this money also allows them to buy essentials on a daily basis, meaning that whenever they, are, they get this money uh, from government, so the student is able to go buy groceries at pick and pay, the student is able to go buy groceries at ShopRite. And, this is precisely uh, to survive and to have, uh, you know, a, a, a conducive learning environment in our university. And of course now, uh, there was a pronouncement made by NESFAS, uh, of course, that seeks to greatly sabotage the ongoing academic project uh, where there's a direct uh, payment uh, system that has been introduced. And of course, the challenges are that students are currently defunded. The very same students who are defunded are the ones that I've just mentioned now, that mm -hmm. they stay in our residences, they depend on this money to survive on a daily basis, they use this money as an allowance to travel to school, they use this allowance to even support parents at home, because I can tell you now, like I've mentioned, that these are students that come from the poor of the poorest, uh, parents are domestic workers, parents are, 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 are government employees, and some of them, they use this money to send it back home to assist siblings as well uh, uh, to survive as well. So you can understand that now when uh, issues are like this are happening, these these, are, these students get get uh, affected in the process. Before we get into the new payment system and uh, the defunding of students, um, the, the what seems to be the issue in terms of uh, the allocations? Um, you know, NSFAS would release a statement saying that look, mm. the money is sitting with institutions yeah. of higher learning. We have, uh, you know, allocated a certain portion of funding to this to um, the um, <coughs> student support services, if I may put it that way. Yeah. But it seems like uh, there is, um, you know, disconnect when it comes to the allocations, particularly to the relevant uh, students. Let's mm. rather put the new payment system aside. But it has been one of the issue sure. that has been. Um, you know, happening in yes. institutions of higher learning. Yes. What is the situation with the student support services? I can tell you now that uh, we've embraced the idea uh, of direct payment because it's interlinked. Uh, money is given to universities for disbursement uh, to students. Uh, and uh, in the process, we've seen that universities are the ones that have found themselves in the peripheral lines of corruption 
where you find uh, money not being allocated to the eligible students mm -hmm. uh, and so forth and so on. Uh, and I can tell you now, it's been a challenge uh, for some students because one, these offices are, 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 are you know, they are, they are, I can, like with our university, the financial aid office, actually it's not the student, student support services, they're called financial aid offices yeah. that, um, that are given a responsibility to assist those students on a daily basis with, uh, with those challenges. But I can tell you now, of course, uh, look, it's clear uh, that universities are implicated in the process of corruption. Uh, NESFAS, uh, people are not held accountable for money that has been allocated uh, unlawfully. Can, there was a student that was given 14 million in Wusu uh, and people never went to jail for that. Actually, the student had to face uh, a, a jail uh, instead of uh, officials of that particular university. So I can tell you now, look, it, that's, that has been the case. And we've said it like, no, it's, 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 not, it's not a problem. We actually embrace the idea that if NESFA sees that universities do not have enough capacity to uh, continue with this process, uh, and they see that this particular process can assist in curbing corruption, we more than welcome that process to take place. And that is why we've said it, that they should have went to uh, uh, check the, the, the data, uh, uh, data of students, that how many students are using these financial institutions uh, pay university, so that if then they, they want to speak about direct payment, that money is then allocated to uh, to, to, to those uh, accounts, uh, specific accounts of students, rather than saying, no, we are, we are, we are uh, bringing out universities out of this system, we're introducing, we're bringing a third party agent in a form of a bank, uh, and then uh, a, a crisis then, uh, like for now, we're in a crisis. So we're saying that universities have been implicated, we support, we agree with NESFAS that those people who have been given that responsibility must be held accountable, must go to jail, uh, and they must face uh, 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 jail time uh, due to, to that corruption and so forth and so on. Come ahead, so I want us to pocket there. We're going to take a quick ad break. After that break, I want us to reflect on the new payment system which has angered uh, students. We know that students marched to Parliament calling for higher education minister Bladen Zamande to intervene against the newly introduced financial aid direct banking system which has not you know only angered students but also led to investigations by the organization uh, you know on doing tax abuse outer and saw a case being lodged with the public protector but we will continue to dissect the issue uh, with the affected uh, parties after the ad break. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. If you're just tuning in, uh, we are in conversation with TUT President Gamu Hezui um, Masig, who is an SRC president. And uh, we are reflecting about the NSFAS new direct uh, payment system, which has seen outrage from students saying that, uh, you know, there is non-transparency there. Uh, there's, you know, the, the system is full of technical glitches and delay in payments is still joining us in studio. Come ahead, so thanks very much for uh, staying on. I want us to reflect on the new payment system, which is part of the challenges of uh, the students there. Um, and as far as saying that um, they are charging 12 rands mm. per month, yes. but we know that uh, some have said that they've, ch they've mm. been charged 29 rands, mm. even higher. Mm. And we know the extent of the allocation, which is mm. not sufficient. Mm. And then once you get uh, all those charges, obviously it becomes a problem. Mm. Why, are they in a why, why are they in a money-making scheme? That's the question that we're asking. Or maybe is this part of the retirement package of the minister? Because we're aware that the minister is retiring soon. Why must students pay 12 rand? Those are the questions that we're asking because we're saying that students have been happy using their banks, paying charges of those banks, of which students have not complained about those charges. But now, surprisingly, with this new implementation uh, of, 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 of uh, this uh, fly-by-night companies that have been appointed, students are paying exorbitant charges. And I can tell you those charges go beyond 12 rand. They go beyond 127 rand because they are not, uh, students have brought, they've brought a, a portfolio of evidence to us because we've said that if you we want to have a solid case against this fallacious company that has been appointed by the CEO of Nesfas and his friends, we need tangible proof to actually check that there's no consistency in terms of uh, these charges that students are seeing that 
uh, these are the charges, these are, these are the management fees, levies that we are, we are paying and etc. And I can tell you now, students have provided that data to us and I can tell you that students are paying exorbitant charges way beyond 256 rand a month. And you can understand that the very same money that students are getting on a, on, on a monthly basis is not enough itself for students to survive on a daily basis. So asking a question to say that, but if NESFAS says that the scheme was uh, uh, precisely uh, formed to assist the poor. Why would they opt to? Uh, why would they opt to appoint banks that one don't have financial licenses to operate in the financial sector? Two banks that are charging students exorbitant charges because they've said that they want to assist the poor but they've, they've, they've proven to us that indeed they are the ones that are exploiting the poor and we've been consi consistent and we've preserved and maintained uh, that position. The issue of onboarding seems to be a major problem and I mean I, I saw a lot of tweets from students uh, you know complaining that um, there's actually no one to assist if they are experiencing technical glitches or challenges with a new payment system. Um, the onboarding system, obviously, if there's no one to assist there, then it becomes a problem. Where do we go for someone to resolve these challenges? Exactly my point. Because we said to them, bring your people, let us have discussions so that you take us through. Because part and parcel of the clarity-seeking questions we have uh, pertain to that question who will be on standby on our campuses to assist our students on a daily basis who will be in our campuses to make sure that if students are facing challenges that pertain to this system you have your people who are there uh, or you, you have people who are there on standby to assist them so I can tell you now my brother we've we've called upon officials of, of one of NESFAS second to that we've called upon uh, the uh, officials of Izaka because with our university is it's Izaka that has been appointed to facilitate this kind of uh, process uh, of finances of students. But I can tell you, the people that are working there are people are people who have been taken from the streets, are people who have been taken from the streets from the corner to say, come, 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 because this is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a daily heist. So you can understand that the arrangement of this process is not credible. There's no proper. Uh, it, 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 it's just fallacious in its nature. So people that have been taken to assist students are actually people that have been taken from the robots uh, in, our, in our university to come and assist uh, our students. Others are even student assistants that of course would be eager uh, to get that 5 rand, 10 rand uh, on a daily basis that these criminals are, are offering uh, to give them. What do you make of NSFAS saying that um, the reason for taking the direct payment system is to ensure accountability on students allowances and to create an easier coordinated system uh, you know so that uh, students may somehow, somehow be accountable to the allocation that they have to agree with that what accountability because the money of students is disappearing in the very same banks that have been appointed by NSFAS students have provided us with financial financial transcripts that money has, have, has been debited in our accounts but surprisingly when we enter our app that money has been, is, 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 is no longer there we have proof uh, uh, and that is why we've went to the Pretoria, Pretoria Central Police Station to open a case of corruption because students have provided us with, with proof that my, this is the money that has been debited in my account but when I enter the app uh, that money is no longer there. So what accountability? Because we've said it that they could have just went to Capitec. A lot of our students use Capitec, by the way, and it's not a secret. They could have went to Capitec and check how many students are using Capitec. You check how many students are using Capitec. You have an agreement with Capitec and a memorandum of understanding with Capitec that, look, we're trying to remove criminals from this process because we want to uh, have a, a process where there will be full accountability and so forth and so on. Uh, can we have 100,000 students using your financial bank? Can we have that process with, with, with Capitec? You have that process process with FNP because we are saying that students have never had any problem with, with those financial banks. We understand that they have removed universities as role players because of many issues that they have yeah. brought forward, corruption, unaccountability and so forth and so on. But we are saying that our students use Capitec and they are happy with their Capitec and we are not going to fight our students with their Capitec. Go to Capitec, check how many students are using Capitec, have a memorandum of understanding with Capitec and have that direct payment system directly from NESFAS with Capitec to our students who don't have an issue. But now you appoint a fly-by-night company because you have interest, because you know that you can't go to Capitec to ask for bribe, but you know that you can go to your friend and ask for bribe. Those are some of the issues my brother that were raising, and unapolo unapologetically so, without any fear of evil. 
I, I want you to you know, reflect on the issue of defunding of students. I mean, you did touch on it. Um, NSFAS is saying that um, there is quite a lot of incorrect information sure. that was um, <clears throat> you know, um, given by the students there. But they, they are saying that this is some sort of a remedial process that they are embarking on so that they, you know, they do not wrongfully allocate the funds to the people that actually are not intended for. Sure. I want you to answer that question after the ad break when we come back. Now, NSWAS contends that the new system was introduced to ensure that uh, funded students receive their allowances for transportation, food, and other living expenses in a secure and seamless way, whereby, uh, you, uh, I mean, Gamahetsu is not agreeing with that, saying that, look, they should have just went with uh, a more established banking system, uh, such as the, you know, the more mainstream banks that we know, so that they may be able to, you know, flow the amount of uh, allocations in a seamless way. Um, so they are saying that, look, we needed them to do that. This new system is really not working, but we will touch on the issue of the defunding of students after the ad break. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching So Into Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are almost at the end of the show and we're still dissecting the burning issue of the NSFAS direct payment with the TUT uh, SRC president, Gamo Hedri um, Masigo, still joining us uh, in studio. Gamo Hedri, thanks very much. Uh, before the ad break, um, I, 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 you know, I posed the question of defunding of students. Yes. NSFAS is saying that this is a remedial process for them so that they do not make, uh, you know, incorrect allocations. We know that, I mean, recently an SIU report released that they've used, I mean, five billion to students that were actually not intended to mm. be funded there. What do you make of that statement? And also, are there students that have not received their allocation mm. for maybe the past two months? Yeah, it's good. The SIU is doing a good job. Uh, money that uh, is, is, is wrongfully allocated must be taken back to the state. We're not going to differ with that approach from NESFAS uh, that indeed uh, there is criminal injury uh, in our universities. But we're saying that don't use a blanket approach uh, in trying to address this matter because I can tell you a lot of students have reached out to us that are eligible for funding. And these are some of the concerns that we've raised that the NESFAS must not use a blanket approach in trying to justify that uh, the SIU has done this and that, whereas indeed there are students that are eligible for funding. Yeah, those that are not eligible for funding, their parents must pay for, 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 for their, for their, for their uh, uh, tuition fees and other issues. And the money uh, that is supposed to assist the deserving must be allocated to the deserving, of which the deserving is the poor and the marginalized. And of course, uh, the issue of defunding. Uh, the issue of defunding is it affects directly affects the students because look, I'm defunded. It, it therefore means that I no longer have a place to stay. It means that I no longer have uh, money to go to school. It means that I no longer have money to buy essentials to survive on a daily basis. So indeed, that is a crisis, and we're saying that we condemn uh, that approach from NSFAS. Uh, let them go do their homework. Uh, and students that are eligible for funding must be given uh, uh, that money to continue uh, with the academic year that is currently on a peak uh, so that these students don't face academic and financial exclusion come 2024. Let's touch on your suspension. I, I know that you re you've received um, you know, a suspension letter signed by the um, Vice Chancellor, uh, uh, Prof. Dinyoko Maluleka. Yeah. Um, let's talk about what it entails what are you being accused of? Yes. No, I think it's not Tiniko. Mm. Uh, I think, uh, I re remember our VC has an has a, a advisory committee. Perhaps it might not be the principal. Yeah. Uh, because we vented out to the principal, and I can tell you in good faith that the principal uh, sympathizes with our concerns. Uh, but look, uh, history has taught us that uh, whenever there's a revolution, uh, student leaders are always purged with suspensions uh, to deter uh, the struggle. So I can tell you I sleep peacefully at night uh, because I know that the CEO when he goes to work in the morning he thinks about me. Actually today it was reported that he's been given special leave uh, so it means it's one one I'm suspended, he's suspended, it means we're equal. So, but I can tell you I'm, I'm fine, I'm strong, I'm healthy like a lion 
uh, in the jungle. Uh, they've said that I participated in an organized protest of which I feel that that's my democratic right. I'm a custodian of the of 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 of, of the student body. I lead the constituents of over 33,000 students. Uh, who I must then go and account to. I'm not pleased by drinking water and sitting in useless meetings discussing nothing with officials of the university. I don't, I'm not there to beg them. Nor am I apologetic for my approach in trying to address the concerns that uh, are affecting the students that I lead on the ground. Do you think that will deter you, um, your efforts, as um, a student population in order to address these issues? Students are angry. Lectures are finding it difficult to conduct classes because students are saying that it can't be correct that our own president, by the way, the chairperson of SASCO, the biggest branch in the country, has also been suspended. So I'm saying that students are saying that it can't be correct that our leaders are, are suspended on the basis that they've decided to stand firm in trying to address this matter. So I can tell you the only crime that we've committed in the university, because I don't have any criminal record, is, that, that is, is, is the crime that of saying that we are not going to sit in useless meetings, drinking water with officials, taking pictures while students uh, are, are not receiving the allowances, while fly-by-night fly by companies are appointed uh, and no one is held accountable. Just lastly, before I let you go, what do you make of the unallocated funds that are in uh, you know, various institutions? I know that you are from TUT, but um, I, I mean, we recently we saw a, UJ, for instance, paying um, 311 million rand back to NSFAS because that amount was unallocated. And then you are voicing out issues that students are, you know, are, are struggling. Mm. Um, some are defunded and mm. stuff, but you still have institutions that mm. would sit with millions of mm. rands mm. in, 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 in their coffers. Mm. And then now, after proclamations from mm. SIU, then mm. they will have mm. to pay it back mm. because of now they will have to comply. Mm. And at the end, there are still students uh, in the cold. That is wrong. Universities, actually those officials, uh, those financial clerks occupying uh, CFO positions in those institutions must be held accountable, they must go to jail. Because it can't be correct that uh, millions are kept in uh, institutional uh, coffers. Uh, and they are just there to, 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 to be stolen by those that want to buy nice cars, those that want to stay in nice houses, uh, and etc. So we, we are indeed, actually now I'm, I'm calling upon for that proclamation. They must come to TUT to check because we are, we are quite aware as well that uh, our university has been under audit uh, by NESFAS and we are not sure of what the outcomes of that report mm -hmm. and we have not been briefed of what was the resolution. But indeed, the SIU must actually come to TUT to check. Perhaps maybe they can find double of what they found in UG. Kebo Hetsu, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us. I wish we had um, more time just to discuss quite a lot of issues, but yeah. we will definitely have you on the show sure. soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my brother. Kebo Hetsu Masike, the suspended TUT SRC president, detailing the effects that uh, the new direct payment system has on the students as well as, uh, you know, um, some of the challenges that uh, students are facing. I must say that we did invite the National Student Financial Aid Scheme to join us in this discussion. Slumezi Kosa was supposed to come and, you know, just give us clarity on some of the issues that are raised by the students, but uh, uh, there were a no-show. Uh, hopefully we will have them uh, in uh, uh, later episodes, if I may put it that way. Skosana, um, uh, that's Slumezi Skosana there. Well, that's how we wrap it up uh, for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Simply send us an email. It's uh, Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Or you can simply just call us or WhatsApp us. It's uh, 081-531-8857. Bye. So from myself and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching.